Hi, welcome back to Bear Hobbies. We are in Japan. Hi, welcome back to the show. We are in Shizuoka for Japan Hobby Fair 2019. Let's have a look around. I'm going to show you all I can from the event. Okay, so we're at Aoshima stand at the moment. Aoshima 172 scale JGSDF models, quite popular in the range. They seem to have some new ones. One of them looks like a Patriot type launcher. And also the wheeled armored vehicle from uh, JGS Death. This looks brand new. It's uh, the Amtrak. Also with some accompanying dinghy. That looks really nice. Here's the, I think these are the sprues. No, this is the sprues for the Jags Death. Don't know when that's going to be out, but I think that's going to be really popular in 72 scale. Now we're looking at the range of car kits. These are 124th scale kits. All of these are snapped together kits, but they're also of a very high detail nature. I noticed that uh, Hasegawa have quite a few in the range, but Aoshima have quite a few. That's a BR86, I believe. They've got a really good range. The parts count is quite low. You can see there's very few sprues. These are very simple, but the probably the big good point on this is that you've got the chrome parts and the body is already pre-painted and gloss effect. So this is a real easy snap together kit probably a real good starter kit and also maybe quite good for super detailing if you're into this sort of stuff looks like a, a taxi this looks like one of their new kits that's coming out and on this stand here I believe these are the more traditional plastic injection requiring assembly with glue now look at that that uh, I think that's a G, G, what's that, a 25 GTX, kind of nice, I want to look for some GTRs if we can find them. <laughs> 124 Takamura trucks, really nice livery on these. Ah, here they are, the Skylines. That's what we're looking for. And these are, I think they're, yeah, initial D. Yeah, these are the initial D, the Trino, RX-7, legendary GTR in that blue. And I think that's the midnight purple GTR there. And this RX-7 looks absolutely splendid. Really nice selection there. I don't know if these are new or otherwise, but they look absolutely great. Okay, let's have a look at the Mr. Hobby stand. What you see in this stand are Gundam, but really what they're demonstrating are their metallic range of markers, etc. Looks like some new paints. They've got Gundam color for builders, I don't know if that's a new paint range. The accretion, these are the acrylic range of paints that they brought out. And we'll probably see some new colors around here. Okay, I'm not quite sure what that is, y Yakuma, but it has the World War II reference. Looks like they've done some research into their paint colors. I'm guessing it, it will be for Japanese Imperial Navy or Air Force or Army. I can't really tell you. I'll try and find out some information on that. This is, I can't say it, Laskavis. Well, it's the paint set for figurines specifically. But they've tried to create the realistic colors. Usual sanding sticks. 
Mr. Hobby, the range of their equipment is really good, really top standard Japanese tools. These are already out, there's a G-Tool grinder, these are really good, I really recommend these if you can find them, or alternatives. It looks like they've also got something there, yeah, masking clay. Here's the demonstration table from Mr. Hobby. I think you can try airbrushing, etc. Okay, so we've got some vendor type stands here. This is Eastern Express. They have, uh, wow, that's a real bad spelling error. Soviet Space Shuttle, I think they mean Space Shuttle. Buran. That's a 150 tick scale, so this looks like it might be more to do with uh, military wargaming. And that's from Rubicon models. Ru uh, I have not heard of this manufacturer before. Obviously 172 scale. They've got a really quite a nice range of early Soviet tank types. Like Zilla gas trucks, SDKFZ half track. SDKFZ222, 234. Now I really like these. Amtrak's Second World War, lots of variations. And there's a Yag Panther there at the back. Now these, yeah, these look really good. I think these are going to be popular. I don't know if they're new. I haven't heard of Rubicon before, but I'm really quite like that range. This is Mini Art. These are quite recent, they aren't brand new releases. They're recent inside the catalogue. Really nice diorama range, of course, from Mini Art. And here's a new announcement, official launch announcement of a Fokker Wolf Treb Flugel Interceptor. So, okay, that is, that's from Mini Art as well. They're going, it looks like they're doing this sort of paper panzer stuff now. Uh, this looks quite an interesting kit. I think this one's going to be kind of popular. Don't know anything about it, but it really does look good in 35th scale, so that's compatible with your armor scale. And there's that Sharo tank that's been out a while. And also a little bit of rail stuff as well. Interesting to see they've got Hella here, Hella the French manufacturer. I believe that they have actually ceased altogether now, but um, they're here at the show anyways. Airfix have a logo here, but I can't see anything from them. These are Zvezda. Zvezda bringing out lots of great new toolings recently, uh, including that T-28, that medium Soviet tank. Uh, that's a SDK said 184. I think that's the Ferdinand. And they've got a Grad launcher there. This is a brand new release, the new T-34-76. And that's an Uromash uh, turreted one. I can't see the sprues for that one. I'd love to see that built up, but it's not here. Uh, this is a variation on the Tiger. <coughs> and that's a 172 scale SU-30M SM. And I think this is new as well, the Su-85. And this is a uh, Soviet tank destroyer, T-34 chassis. And that looks really cool. Okay, 72 scale, T15, this is like, very similar to the Armata, but this Armata type chassis, but with a different turret. That looks really good, the details on that look really tight. Okay, here's Meng. Meng start off with their sort of tune ships and tune aircraft. 
Uh, this has been out a little while. That's an entirely snap fit, one ninth scale Ninja. This is new, a Leopard 2A7 Plus. They've got extensive range. You can see what's been added to this one with the addition of that remote controlled uh, heavy machine gun mount. And here's the Rolls Royce armored car. Okay, moving on. Hobby fan are part of AFV Club. So they've got these together with Hobby fan producing more or less resin aftermarket accessories. This is a brand new release from AF AFV Club. It is the you know Dragon Lady U2C spy plane in Thai, in, uh, Thai Air Force markings. That's a 148 scale. Don't know what's going on with the canopy there, but maybe we can find out. Okay, they brought out a new addition to their M113 range, which is uh, Nagmash. That's the Israeli Defense Forces version. There's a M18 howitzer, the M108, the early Paladin, sort of Vietnam War type era. And that looks like a Nike Hercules missile. This is new, okay, so we've got Tamaya releasing their uh, uh, British SPG, the Archer, and AFE Club have brought out the Achilles. This looks new, FV35308. That looks like, it is obviously a, it's got the lower hull, but I don't know what the turret's from. I don't really know anything about that vehicle. Looks new, it's a, a yeah, it looks like a brand new release famous uh, half track in Japanese self force Japanese ground self defense force markings fully detailed chassis there that is the anti aircraft 50 cal quad mount in the back there it's like a striker variant there and another M113 with a different couple on it so the M13 is really being expanded by AFB Club. I'll just come back to that. That is a it's a Centurion chassis, but I'm not too sure about the turret. What we have got is announced, we've got a, the information there for a Centurion Mark III Korean War version. But not too sure about that one. Okay, so let's have a look at the manufacturer. Doyusha, we don't really see this one in Europe or USA. I think most of the kits are really designed towards Japanese domestic Asian market. But you know, that's a great thing about coming to a show like this, you're gonna see some different stuff. So let's have a look at this. This is, uh, let's keep the genres real open. These look really cute. These are like uh, toy toon tanks. They're multicolored, like a pink Sherman. They've got like a stern tiger there, tiger one. They've got like kitties, bears inside them. They're really cute. I am absolutely for sure getting one of these to build with my daughter. Let's move up here. Okay, a bit more serious stuff. Uh, once a 144 scale airliners, uh, the Zero and some other Japanese aircraft, Second World War era, another Zero, another Zero. Here's their Temple series. I saw these in Korea when I was there last time. First time I've seen them built. I'm just sort of saying that this, you know, again opens up this big range of scale modeling. They certainly look impressive. They probably not too difficult to build. Spend a lot of time we uh, weathering, detailing. Something like that wouldn't look too out of place maybe on in your front room, to be honest. They're really beautiful. If, see, if you come to Japan, visit one of the temples or castles, and then build a model of it as well, huh? Uh, looks like a range of samurai type memorabilia here. Can't really tell you too much about that as I can't interpret anything, so I'm just gonna show you what there is. 
they are selling kits on sale here as well. Mixed amongst all this, there is die cast and radio control, but there is so much here, I don't really want to cover that. Okay, with the uh, Zuki Mura stand here, I think the big release recently is the Kawasaki KI-45 Toryu, and there she is, 132 scale, twin engine, Japanese air interceptor fighter from the Second World War. I'm just going to let you have a look at that, it looks very impressive. This looks new, I don't believe Zukimura have done 72 scale and 144 scale, so you've got like the little 144 and also 72 scale, the Horton HO229, of course they did release this kit as a fully detailed kit in 132 scale, but check out this little 72 scale one, again fully detailed interior components engines loads of detail in there looks like a brand new release and I don't know this is a new F4J really wanting to see somebody bring out an F4E or F4G but we're gonna have to wait for that one okay so we're looking at Tamaya here this is awesome Tamaya have got a full injecting, injection plastic machine here and the guys are producing sprues and runners at the moment and as you can see you actually this is a free gift from Tamaya you're getting a figurine I think 1 16th scale they're just giving that way as, as a as a gift here and they're doing the full injection molding process right in front of us so let's see if we can check that out you can see up there this is the hopper where all the granules of plastic are fed into the machine I was hoping to see it run and produce something but maybe maybe they're they're cooling it down this is the oh here's the process let's look at this now there it goes and there it is, right in the bun. There, there you go. You see the full injection molding process right in front of your eyes here from Tamaya and Shizuoka. Okay, so let's check out Tamaya. Everybody wants to know about Tamaya. Remember, Tamaya, really big on RC. Plastic models is their secondary stuff. But uh, we're scale modelers, so we like the uh, plastic model kits. So I'm not really going to spend much time in the RC. Here's their superstar. They got is they got the the Supra. Obviously, the Supra has come out again. Toyota have re-released this classic, updated. They got the real deal here, and of course, over there is a kit. I think that might be an RC version, but I'm sure they did. Re I think they've got the release in 124 in plastic injection. Let's move around and see if we can find the kit. Okay, yeah, so that's an RC body. Let's see if we can find it 124. Okay, I found it. Here's the scale model part of Tamaya. Their big new release, of course, is the M10C Achilles, the British variant of the M10. This time it's armoured. The big difference here for the British version is they have a 17 pounder. And of course with Tamaya, we've got all the sprues laid out for us. And as you can see, you've got a whole new range of British crew, British uniforms. You've got the driver, commander, loader, gunner. Nice detailed interior. And also some accessories that go with that kit. As a comparison there, you've got the M10, the previous re release, the, the US version. And of course, here's their other big release. This is the Hummel. Hummel, German for Bumblebee, for their self-propelled guns. What you've got, you've got the kit there. That one has got a metal barrel. The metal barrel is an optional part that you can purchase. 
Of course, if you just get the basic kit, you do get a barrel, as you can see on the sprues, but it's just a simple split barrel and plastic. If you get the upgrade, I don't know the price, but you don't need to deal with that seam, if that, you're know, that sort of guy. Or if you just like adding a little bit aftermarket. Hummer looks really nice there. You can see it's like a Panzer IV chassis vehicle, very large upper superstructure. And the one that in the white there, that's actually a Nash horn. That's a, um, that's a anti-tank self-propelled gun. The Hummel is a howitzer, so it's an artillery piece. I think with the Hummel, let's just check the sprues. You have got a full crew here, and they're actually loading up the Hummel into the back, so the ammunition's being loaded up. I'm not too sure if the crew come with the vehicle, but on this box here, on the white box, you can see the crew in the right hand part of the picture. But I think if you want to do a diorama, you're probably going to invest in that crew. They've got them in really good poses, they're accurate poses, ready for a diorama. Are they okay? This is interesting. We've got the uh, LAV, which has been released. I've built this kit before. And I'm trying to see what's different about this one, and I can't actually work it out. I might just ask. Hello, sir. What's the new part of this vehicle? New parts. I can remember the metal chassis on the original kit, and there's some upgrade, and I think it's this M60 coupler, yeah? <laughs> And also the figure, I can... Okay, okay. Right, okay, so we've got the, the figure. And just a few extra parts added in. So it's like a upgrade, upgraded kit. Wow, here's the 116 scale Sheridan. This is a, it says tentative, so it's going to be released. The 116 Sheridan has been has been released as a full option remote control kit, but also, as you know, Tamiya do release kits in their remote control range as scale models. But you can see the sprues there. Obviously, this comes right on the back of their 135th scale Sheridan. So if you're in a 116, there you go. You can build up the kit. There, it looks very impressive. Really big build. It's even got a figure inside there, and that is a sprue to itself. Uh, this is quite a recent release. It's the 172 scale BF 109 G Gustav fighter. I'll show you the sprues here. The box art. Remember that the 148 scale was released just a couple of years ago. Now they brought that kit into 72 scale. The highlights really are the details inside the cockpit, as you can see. Fully detailed cockpit, and Tamiya really, are, their 72 scale kits are on par with the 48 and the 32 scale ones. Really recommend that you check them out if you are a 72 scale aero modeler. Nice range of markings as well with that kit. And then also one of their other new releases, 112 scale Monkey 125. This is not the 1970s Monkey bike. This is a recent Honda sort of modernized 2019 version. But you can see it's got all the retro styling of the original Monkey bike. Really nice sprue parts there. You can see straight away a really nice simple kit, nice layout. All the details there, rubber tires, the seat, nice decals, some metal springs. And to complement that, Tamiya always support their models with a great range of spray cans. So right out of there you've got the actual correct yellow, the white, the red. With those spray cans and the kit, you'll just be able to build that all out the box. And as a bit of a bonus, if you need some references, there she is, the real monkey bike. Just showing the Tamiya range of tools and paints. Nothing really special to mention here. This stuff has been out quite a while. Just did want to say, guys, if you are scale modelers, 
invest in some good quality tools really seriously if you like this hobby treat yourself to the best to my uh, the tools are outstanding a little bit expensive but why not treat yourself to the good stuff they've got an airbrush demonstration here I don't think they've got a new airbrush but they are letting guys try it out which is really important I think this is excellent uh, especially allowing uh, younger generation to have a go at airbrushing that's great I often do that with my daughter I let her try the airbrush with some acrylic paints just to sort of have a bit of fun it doesn't need to be modeling okay so let's have a look at the 124th scale car range from Tamaya Straight away we see a classic. This is the Lamborghini Contash. This is one of their older kits. Looks like a special re-release. Yeah, the big deal here is that they've got a new body and it's already clear coated. And this seems to be a trend. I did see the Eoshima kits that were very similar to this. So the big advantage here is you're basically ready to go. There's no painting involved. A very simple assembly with these earlier kits, a very quite a few less parts the AMG has been out a little while I don't this looks like a new markings on it uh, Lee on C V S TOS AMG yeah it looks like uh, new rims on that one and different markings we've got a Mazda 787 I think this is new not really too up on my 124 scale kits this definitely is a new release when i can get around there this is the toyota gazoo racing hybrid a hybrid racing vehicle so sort of future motorsports stuff this is electric and petrol powered vehicle from toyota looks very impressive here's the sprue layout look at these parts just going to go in there look at the chrome part part that is actually the windscreen I believe which is or part of the cowling it looks absolutely beautiful in those markings look at the rims they're fantastic and there's the big range of decals that you need to apply the paint masks everything in the box there from that new release the Toyota Gazoo racing hybrid uh, still with Tamaya here this is a range of Japanese masters with some of their dioramas featured either within the Tamaya catalog or within the Japanese scale modeling magazines. Let's just go and have a look at these. Obviously featuring Tamaya kits. German armor being very popular. Got the name of the modeler here. Kenichi Moro Matsu. Oh, really nice civilian diorama here. Street scene in France. Beautiful. Guys, if you do come to the hobby fair, you can buy all the Tamaya stuff. I've just found this section as part of Tamaya. It is absolutely packed. They have a range of kits, all their tools, all their RC equipment, and also a very interesting range of apparel. So let's go and have a look at that. If you want your Tamaya tie, t shirts, etc., this is a place to come. Definitely try and find a cap if I can. Yeah, they've got bags, t-shirts, everything, everything you want to need, even the even the ties. Ties are really quite nice. I think you could get away with that one in the office. <laughs> yes, brand new Hummel is on sale at 3,800 yen as as the the Japan Self-Defense Force wheeled armored vehicle 
at 4,800 yen. You can buy kits. They've got quite a lot of deductions on some other stuff as well. That Lamborghini as well that we saw before, that is on sale. Really big queue, very popular, as you would expect from Shizuoka.